Hi, and today, Burbujita and I, your co-host, we're gonna be doing a video about hair color. Fasten your seat belts. The video is about to start. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. There we go. Before I go any further, I want you to ingrain these words in your brain. These words are hair color contributing pigments. Yes, hair color contributing pigments are the biggest enemy of any desired hair color. Very rarely these contributing pigments help us. Are there usually to make our life a nightmare. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you more tips and more clues and more points for you to think about hair color. Maybe are things that you knew, and maybe these things are things that will make you think about hair and the color of the hair, and it's gonna make your hair explode. So let's start with hair. What is the hair? The hair is something that comes out of your scalp, right? It doesn't have nervous system because imagine if it would, you would be doing everything you're doing to your poor hair. But anyway, let's go serious now. The hair has three layers. The first layer is the cuticle where the outside of the hair is. And the cuticle is form of a corneous uh, protein, which is the same thing that nature makes the nails or the horns of the animals. It's the same thing, the cuticle, right? So we have the cortex, which is below the cuticle layer. That is where all the hair color stuff happens. And then below that, we have the medulla, which is like the stem of the hair. Now we're gonna go and talk about the color chart that goes from one to 10. And these ones are the color levels. One being the darkest, 10 being the lightest. So when you have hair coloring, you have a main number, and then there is a big point, and then there is two more numbers or one number. So that means that the first number in the hair color, that would be your natural level tone. So in this case, for example, and this color here has 9.12. So anything before the point is a natural level that they're telling you what it is, which is nine, which is super blonde and is natural. Uh, it's one before the 10, so it's really blonde. And then point, and then it has a one and then a two. So after the point is the other 50%. So it's 50% would be of the level nine direct dye, which is gonna be the dye that goes inside the cortex of the hair. And then after the point, we have the toning part, which would be one, two. And the one would be, after the point is 35%, and then the second number is 15%. So it has 35% of ash, and it has 15% of green. That means that these color molecules are really tiny and small, so they go inside the cortex of your hair. So this is the first part of the point. So in this case was the nine. Then we have the toners or mass pigments and they're made of, you know, like indirect molecule dye. And those, those colors are like a little bit bigger, the, the molecules. Therefore, they will stay only in the cuticle level of your hair. These ones do not go inside your cortex, okay? And this is when you will be very blessed to know about contributing hair color pigment. Be aware that indirect color molecules or the ones that are after the point, 
these ones are the indirect, and these color molecules will fade. So if you got your hair toned and you didn't like it, don't worry, you shampoo it a lot, it'll go away. And in the case that you really liked your tone, let's say that you got an ash blonde and you loved it, you're like, oh my God, this is the best color of my life. I love it. You did a great job, whatever. Don't worry. After a few shampoos, guess what? It'll fade away. It'll wash out. So far, up to the year 2020, nobody has designed a hair color formulation that will stay true through the whole process. I mean, it will stay mainly, but it's always going to fade. And it has to do not only because the, the indirect pigment in the cuticles, but it also has to do with the environment, with the quality of water, with the quality of shampoo, with the quality of conditioner. Um, everything plays a big, big, big role on how to keep your hair color. But remember, it doesn't matter if you have the best scenarios, your indirect pigments will go away. You probably heard about the word or the term lifting, it's lifting the hair. So if you don't know what that means, it means that the hair goes lighter. So every time somebody says, oh, my hair go is going lighter, you can also say my hair is lifting. It's not lifting, it's just lifting in color. Now, like I told you, remember, we have the hair color contributing pigments. This is the most important and the most valuable part of this video. This could save your hair life. So what is this? So Contributing pigments is what is left in the hair, what kind of tones are left in the hair after you lift it in whatever level, desired tone you went to. So for example, this is also called exposed underlining pigment. I call it hair contributing pigment. So this is really important. So what happens to your hair after it's being lifted or it's being lighted? You know what happens? You will have this pigment left in your hair. So each level works differently and it, it keeps eating some of the pigment until it's pale yellow. But in between, you will have some reds and oranges left and this is your hair contributing pigment. The really bad part about this is that all of the uh, clients that after they wash the hair and they see their hair contributing pigment, they think that the hairdresser was a bad hairdresser or they use cheap hair color or whatever. And it's not the case. Even though some hairstylists, they know better what they're doing. And even though some colors are better than others, I do have to tell you that that will always be exposed later or sooner or sooner or later you know that is gonna be the case and you're always gonna see it so when that happens you need to tone again and that's it so what would be the difference between the hair contributing pigment and the natural level colors so there's two charts right so we see now that we have hair contributing pigments and we also see that we have the natural color pigment. So when you see the, for example, a level five, the natural level desired color, and then you see five, the real deal, the contributing hair pigment. So that is if the level five wouldn't have any toners on it, on that tint, this is how your hair will look like. So when we're formulating, we have to get ready to read, and this is why I always advise you to go to a professional. So now it's time to talk about what do you put on your hair. It's four main things. So first we have the hair color or hair dye. I compare it as a regular nail polish, like the red one let's say, 
you paint your nails red and then there you are you know it's red it covered it's done you don't see anything under it's a really good cover right so this is the hair dye that's what it does it makes your hair into a different color so the following we have the bleach which is a powder or a cream or whatever and the bleach would be like your acetone, like your nail polish remover. So the bleach is here to remove hair color pigmentation. Either natural or artificial, the bleach will remove it. Also, we have your toners or glossers, and those ones are like when you don't want to put hair color in your nails, but you want the shine, and that shine has a little bit of pink or something like that, it, you know, you see like the little drop is see-through, but it has some pink on it, but it's not pink, it's just transparent with like a little hint of pink. Okay, these are the toners or glossers, and that's what they do. They're here to help tone your hair. It will not color your hair, it will not lift your hair, it will just gloss, it will just tone your hair. That's what it is. Now, we have the peroxides or developers. Usually professional hair colors work with developers or peroxides. And we're gonna talk about it now. Okay, so developers, they come in many volumes. And the volumes I compare it as if you have a, an Alka-Seltzer and you put it in a glass, if you put one Alka-Seltzer, it has certain you know, like uh, bubbles. If you put two alka seltzers, it's more power. So think, compare your developer to what I just said. So let's start with the seven volume developer. The seven volume developer is to apply a toner. It will not change the cuticle. It will just deposit any color you put. That would be your seven volumes. Now we have the ten volumes. The ten volumes will mini, tiny, kind of, almost not, but lift a little bit of the hair color and will deposit a little bit of the hair color inside your cortex, but just a little bit. So that is the ten volumes. Ten volumes could perhaps lift half, one, even two levels. I've seen this happen. Even though the temp volumes is, you know, sold as it will not change the hair color, it does. It changes your natural base color like a tiny, tiny little bit. So be very careful when you're using temp volumes. If you think you're not changing, it will change something. And now we have your 20 volumes, which is the standard peroxide or the standard developer that we use for normal hair coloring, especially to cover gray and stuff. So this one will lift your hair one or two levels for sure, for sure. This is not like maybe if you're lucky, this is for sure. One to two levels with hair color, and then two to three levels if you mix it with bleach. Now you have your 30 volumes developer, which will lift your hair uh, color up to two to three levels with hair color and for sure three to four levels when you mix it with bleach. After this, anything you do, you cannot do at home. I don't recommend it. I say don't do it. Don't try this at home. But there is a 40 volumes developer that when you mix it with um, your hair color, it lifts your hair up to four to five levels. And if you use it with bleach, it would lift it up to eight levels. So imagine the power of this developer is kind of dangerous. If you apply it to your scalp, it could uh, give you blisters. If you leave it in the hair for too long, it will dissolve the hair. So this is a no-no for home. This is only for professionals. Please, I'm telling you. Then in some countries, believe it or not, we have 50 volumes developer. Actually in the US here I found 50 volumes. 
And in some countries, they have 60 volumes developer. So the 50 and the 60 are not to be mixed with bleach ever. Not even by professionals. That will disintegrate your hair after a few minutes. I promise you, don't ever try this. It's like the worst you can do. It will give you a chemical cut. And if you put it in your scalp, even with just color, it will probably give you blisters or probably melt your scalp. So that's why in the US they're not even available. But I do have to say that once I went to South America and they did some highlights on me with uh, a level eight ash with 60 volumes. And I was so afraid because I study hair in the US and in the UK, so I just never uh, thought that, that they even have that. So when they finish, I have to say that my highlights were beautiful, like beautiful, beautiful. I've never seen any color so beautiful. But, but, again, these 50 and 60 volumes, they would be only to be used with color, no bleach, color, and it would have to be used on a foil. They cannot be put on the scalp. Please don't do this. Don't do this. I don't recommend it. It's not allowed for normal people. Now you have more information about what the hell is happening with your hair. I do have to add that sometimes when you mix bleach with 10% in somebody that is um, very blonde already, it's gonna do a beautiful job. You don't need 20%. Bleach and 10 will work. Now, let's go directly into our lovely color wheel. <laughs> so, the color wheel, it's formed mainly of three colors. As you can see, these girls dancing. So they present red, yellow, and blue. Those colors appear in nature, and you cannot get any combination to get those. Those colors are it. They exist. They're like a printer. Those are the three colors that you need. And with those three colors, you do anything. Okay? Now we're going to go and see the secondary colors. The secondary colors are the colors that you get when we mix two primary colors. So when you mix two primary colors, as you see in this color wheel, you will get a secondary color and now you're gonna meet the tertiary colors are when you mix a secondary color with a primary color so when we mix all of these colors we get the famous neutral brown which is supposed to be one unit of blue two units of red and three units of yellow when you do this with aqua colors or whatever, you'll get this brown. You know what I'm talking about. Now, let's talk about by far my most favorite part of this video. Complementary colors. Colors that live opposite to each other in the color wheel. The magic is that not only complement each other, yet also neutralize each other. As you can guess, this is so important when you're formulating for hair color. For example, if you want to eliminate orange tones from the hair, we do want to use some formula with blue base color because blue is opposite of orange in the color wheel, providing you with a more believable neutral brown or blonde end results. And now, you possess the key and the magic to understanding the color wheel. We couldn't do what we do if it wasn't for the help of our sponsors. Thank you, Gustavo Brian Studio, where hair becomes in high art. Also, thank you, Sultry Eyes Lash Studio, where they bring out the goddess out of every woman. And... South Beach Charity Angels, our local charity. Now we have the intel in our bright brains and we can think and we can be realistic about what we want to do 
with our hair color. So in that way, you don't set unrealistic expectations and you don't drive your poor hairdresser crazy. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you more tips and more clues and more points for you to think about hair color. Maybe are things that you knew, and maybe these things are things that will make you think about hair and the color of the hair, and it's going to make your hair explode. So, the only way to get a warm contributing pigment away of your hair permanently is by bleaching it. There's no other way. You might get close, you might get used, you might get to use a toner, a gloss, something that will fix it temporarily because that's gonna be only placed on the you know cuticle area, very indirect dye, it's gonna wash out quick. So please, please remember that. Don't expect miracles. So this would be only in the ideal cases when you lift the tone, you know, a hair color to a desired level, then you bleach it, and then you deposit the desired hair color, and then you have that color, which again, is probably gonna wash out anyway. So there are more things to consider. For example, uh, what is your natural hair color level. This is all to think in the formulation, right? What is your desired tone? What is your desired level of the hair color? Or most importantly, what is your desired level hair color? Also, what is your underlining color? What is your contributing pigment or whatever you want to call it? What would it be from where you are to where you're going. Now you know this. Another one is, what is your amount of gray? And how would the hair color formulation will change or will have to be variated so it would cover the gray, but also do that miracle on your hair that doesn't have gray? I know, it's, it's starting to get complicated. And now worse is like this is the worst case that nobody gets is when the people lie about, you know, usually we ask, so, so do you have any hair color in your hair? They're like, no, I don't have any hair color. Or, um, or we're like, have you done a gloss or anything? No, I haven't done anything. And then when we do the highlights or when we do the color, there is an area like this that lighten, lightens up normally and then there's an area that it's orange and it's not lifting and you know you're like um you told me that there was no hair color or anything they're like oh you know what like like a year ago now i remember i i did like a box color but it washed out it didn't wash out look it's like a mess so you have to be very honest with these things. You cannot lie because your hairstylist is only working while you're telling them. They don't know what happened because all those formulas contribute and they have to be changed and reformulated. And It's more time. It's just like you don't know what you're doing. Please don't lie. Please say the truth. Hot roots. What are hot roots? So... Let's talk about what is the hair, right? So the hair is made of this corneous material that I told you, which is mostly protein. And uh, when it's growing out of the scalp, so the first four weeks to six weeks, it's very tender. And this, this hair is like baby hair. As the time progresses and as it's exposed to the environment and it comes in mature hair, now this hair is going to be regular hair. But meanwhile, remember, when you have hot roots, that means that you're coloring only the hair that is baby hair, the roots, and also you have the contributing uh, factor of your scalp 
temperature because your scalp, if you touch it, is warm. So that's accelerating the formula. And usually warmth makes the hair a little bit redder or goldener or warmer as it processes. So hot roots is when you have the base of the roots a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer. And that is the, like the most typical case of people that are doing their hair color and they don't know what they're doing. So sometimes we um, apply something called a climazone or a, a heat lamp and uh, to accelerate the process of hair color. So like I said before, when that happens, when we formulate, we have already in consideration that your color will, will go warmer. Therefore, we make the specific adjustments so that won't happen. Just for you to know, that's something that if you do at home and, and you heat it up with a blow dryer or whatever, like you didn't know that, then your hair will come out warmer. I am not going to recommend using heat lamps or climazones in bleach super dangerous if you don't know what you're doing you could get a chemical cut please don't do it also there are some hair color factories that they manufacture their colors so when the color processing time stops the color just stops working some though when the color time stops the hair color somehow starts going darker and darker and darker so if you don't know what you're doing if you don't know how your hair color works just respect and follow the instructions because you don't know what could happen after the recommended time so why is older people dyeing their hair blonde and why is it so easy for them to achieve the blonde well, remember what I told you about the contributing pigments? So when you have gray hair, you don't have any contributing pigment. And whatever you put into that gray hair will stay. Sometimes the gray hair will not get that color. Therefore, when you make somebody with a lot of gray blonde, it looks beautiful. It Sometimes it even looks like you have highlights when you don't. It's just your gray. Another thing is that blonde hair is forgiving. So when you are beyond 25 years old, to not say a lot older, and you start having some underbags or lines in your face or simple wrinkles, when your hair is dark for some reason, this darkness around your face, this frame that you have, will accentuate any faults that you have when you're older. But when you're older and you choose to go lighter and blonder, at least around your face, that is going to help you a lot because that's going to make people look more of the hair around the face and not so much of the face. That's why we'd say that blonde is forgiving for the face. And it doesn't matter your ethnicity, it's just easier because your gray hair starts growing quicker and you have to dye your hair every two or three weeks. And when you have the blonde hair, it's just easier. The, you cannot even notice sometimes that you have the roots. Typical example, now that you know about the color wheel, some people they want to do this blue color and they bleach the hair up to a certain level and they left a lot of yellow. Guess what happens when you mix blue and yellow? Yep, you get green. Therefore, the hair color, even though you put blue, it will come out green. So when you do these colors, you have to make sure that the color, all that yellow is out. So when you put the color that you're going to put, there is no contributing pigment making really messy stuff for your end result. Another crazy thing is when clients, they wanna have a complete hair color reparation or correction or whatever you wanna call it. And they come to the salon, they have hair, you know, black like this, it's not even shining. And they've been coloring their hair for years themselves at home with, with these hair dyes. And they put number one or number two for years and years and years. Imagine, it's like a chair that you paint over 
and over. And over and over and over and over and over. And one day you want your hair to your chair to look natural and then you start taking all that paint out. Do you think it's gonna be easy? Do you think that with like a simple solvent all that paint is gonna come out? No. It's gonna take hours. You have to do magic. You have to like oh my god. So a lot of people they think it's like in an hour service, that could take up to eight hours or more. Sometimes it could take several visits. And the other thing is like your hair will be trashed. It doesn't matter what products they add to the bleach after the service. It could improve the hair a little bit. But once you bleach it so much, your hair will be super dry. Will be super dry. So there is, you know... It's just so weird because you're like, oh my God, that is so expensive. It takes so long and my hair will be damaged. Why would I do that? Exactly. Why would you do that? And if you do it, know that it's expensive and your hair will be trashed anyway. I mean, it will be all those hairstyles that you see in magazines with those beautiful waves blowing through the wind. That is fictitious. People don't have that hair. At the moment that your hair is... um colored and it's lifted your hair will be dry i don't care who you are unless you're like a supernatural blonde that went a little bit blonder but anything else when you don't blow dry it or when you don't put a flat iron it's gonna be looking like straw i promise you another point that is super important artificial hair color or color dye cannot be removed with color dye so, for example, if you grew your hair for like two months and you have roots and your hair was brown and now you want to go blonde or like medium blonde and then you put your hair, your tint all over your hair. So this part, the roots will be kind of whatever, but the rest of the hair, nothing is going to happen. Nothing nothing you have to bleach that thing out of your hair hair color does not remove hair color i hope that was very clear i have good news for you let me tell you there is this new keratin that um it can be used for people that is breastfeeding ladies are breastfeeding La ladies or gentlemen with cancer people with low immune systems, blah, 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 etc. It's super safe. But the most important thing is that works with um, wheat protein and it doesn't have formaldehyde. It's not even bad for me. I can touch it with my hands. Nothing will happen. It doesn't make that smell, whatever. The super good news is that that keratin is made in Miami. It, it's, it's available locally. But you know what? It lifts the hair two to three tones so sometimes when people before i used to recommend to take that hair color with bleach i do this keratin and the hair will be lifted to that color and then i can work with it so just for you to know that's another alternative so you don't damage your hair so much and you actually condition it and you lift it remember the lighter your hair goes the drier it goes. It doesn't matter what tricks you put there, what special products that they market so much. Maybe they'll help you some. But the lighter you go, the drier it goes. That rule never, ever, ever fails. So many clients, they say, oh my God, please put... Um, oil or a conditioner in the ends of my hair to protect it and blah 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 ladies let me get this straight bleach is gonna eat through anything imagine if it eats the color pigmentation that you naturally have inside your hair do you think that bleach is not gonna eat through a simple conditioner or coconut oil or oil that bleach is gonna eat anything so the best protection is not to apply the bleach there that's it another one never trust these color charts because they're made for people that is innocent 
So basically, these color charts are made uh, over a white perfect color, and that desired color that you choose in there will never be like that little, you know, swatch of hair ever. It might be similar, but will never be the same. So please don't complain to your stylist like, oh my god, this doesn't look like that. Like, uh, duh. Yeah, because you know what? It is a stylist's fault because they should tell you, look, this is a suggestion. This is like an indication. It'll never look like that. It'll look similar, but not like that. So just for you to know, never ever trust or be certain that your color will look just like the color chart. Because unless we do magic, it will never happen. So all of this was like a skim through or a broad view over hair color. So next time you go to your stylist, you don't look like a person requesting things that were like, oh my God, another crazy one. Now you know what you can request. Now you know what you cannot request. This is very important that you understand all of these principles if you want a great relationship with your stylist so they don't think that you're crazy. Another thing I just wanted to make it very clear. I never recommended any of these things to be done at home. This is, I repeat, just for you to understand how hair color works. This is just for you to have a better communication with your stylist. I am not responsible if you do this and something happens. I'm just really washing my hands because I'm telling you right now that this video wasn't intended for you to do your hair at home. This video was intended for you to know what's happening when you go to your salon with your professional and you communicate with them, then you know what to request. You get that, right? I hope that from now on, you're gonna have like an even more realistic relationship with your hair, with your hairstylist, with your fantasies, with your desires, with your color levels, with your bleaches, with everything. Also, another reminder is that purple color shampoo is not a toner. It might help a little, but it's not a toner. You cannot tone your hair with that. Just for you to know that purple shampoo is not a toner. It's a shampoo with a little bit of purple. That's it. I hope that this video helped you. I hope that you have so much information. So now you can have educated requests with your stylist at your salon professionally. Remember, this is not the kind of content I do. I promise you that I would not do beauty tips, but this one I had to do. I had to do. It's like my consciousness was screaming and was saying, Gustavo, now you have a YouTube channel. Please educate people. Please explain to them how hair color works because it's really painful when we get one of those clients. Please don't be those Karens. Please don't. Educate yourself and request with realistic expectations. Thank you. Thank you so much. And see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. That's clicking on the little bell. Comment all you want. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to grow the community. <laughs> And also, don't forget to follow our social media. And if you want to go ahead and share this video in all your platforms, share the love. Till next time! Bye.